Hello and welcome to Intermediate Microeconomics. I'm Matt Clancy, an instructor at Iowa State University, and this course is designed to kind of give you uh, the tools you need to go on and study economics at the undergraduate level in lots of different fields. We're going to cover the mathematical tools that are used throughout most disciplines of economics. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to study, we're going to really focus on the strengths and weaknesses of the market as a system for organizing society and allocating resources uh, among people and among different activities. And the way that I do it in this course is I use a sort of science fiction, like hypothetical to just kind of keep everything together and keep a consistent sort of through line through this course. And it's not meant to imply that microeconomics only applies to simplified science fiction worlds. It's just a teaching tool to help you keep track of things. But these questions apply to the real world question of when should we use markets? When should governments intervene? Uh, and what are kind of the factors you need to consider about uh, when you're trying to decide how you're going to uh, organize and regulate a society? Now, to make things really crystal clear and sharp, we're going to focus on this kind of sci-fi uh, story fiction. It's the distant future, and humans have got spaceships. OK, so here's our spaceship. And they've, we're going to focus on a group of 100 colonists that have taken a tr uh, ship to a new world. All right, so here's our new world. This new world is kind of a blank slate, OK? There's no pre-existing intelligent life. It's just filled with untouched natural resources. And the people who are setting up here can rethink how they want to organize society and organize their economy. And when they first land on this new world, they are going to be preoccupied with two questions, producing food and shelter. They've been trapped on this ship on their journey for a very long time, decades, we could say, or years. And you know, they're in cramped quarters, eating just some kind of boring, bland, Soylent-style food. And they've now landed on this new world, and their first priority is obtaining food and shelter that's like roomier and more diverse. And they're going to use the resources available to them to get that. But they don't have infinite resources. They have sort of a giant planet, so they have as much land as they need. But they're limited in terms of the labor they can supply, and they're limited in terms of the uh, tools they have. And in particular, we assume that they show up with 100 colonists who are all willing and able to work. So they have basically 100 laborers. And they've also shown up with 50 robots that are kind of general purpose and can do lots of different things. Now, they have to decide how they're going to deploy those resources to the production of homes and shelters for themselves and growing food and so on. Okay, And so we're going to kind of use that problem to think through the ability of, you know, to think through different ways that this could be done. And we're going to start to establish a benchmark with sort of no markets at all. Instead, they're going to use a super intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence supercomputer to decide for them. This is another thing they brought with them on the ship, and it knows how to produce food and shelter. It knows the most efficient technologies and ways to do it that are known to humans. Uh, it knows how to, like, it just knows the best way to use any given set of resources to get a goal. And we're going to use this kind of framework to show how economists mathematically uh, model technologies that are available to firms to produce goods and services, and also to mathematically model how people have preferences over different types of uh, bundles of goods. And then we'll take all that information and pretend we're the supercomputer figuring out how to allocate resources and do things in a way that the uh, colonists are going to like. And we'll come up with a criteria called Pareto efficiency, which we'll talk more about in the future. But this is a sort of bare minimum criteria that they want to hit. And we'll show that the supercomputer, without using markets or anything, can figure out how to do this. Okay, But 
then we'll show that there are a number of problems with this sort of market-free approach. Um, and these problems are not unique to sort of the science fiction uh, parable that we're dealing with here. They're going to apply to any society that tries to bypass the market and achieve its goals without it. It doesn't mean they're insurmountable problems, but they're problems you need to know about and think about how you're going to solve. Then we're going to move to section two. They've got these problems. What are they going to do? Well, we're going to say they're going to actually revert to using markets. Okay, And I call this section market utopia because it's going to basically give us uh, how markets can solve the problem and attain the same outcome that a super intelligent artificial intelligence that knew everything. Uh, a market under the right assumptions can give you the same outcome without those problems that I earlier discussed. And this is really going to culminate in proving what are called the first and second welfare theorems. And these theories basically say, under the right assumptions, a Pareto efficient outcome can be attained and essentially by a, a market. And in fact, any Pareto efficient outcome you want. So basically any set of circumstances that you might want, you can get there with a market and you can do it without some of the problems that we're gonna highlight in section one. So. I call this section market utopia because it kind of shows markets are amazing. They can do all these beautiful things. But the last section of the course, we got to get a little more room here. Section three, we'll call this market reality. And in this section, we're going to basically question the assumptions underlying the first and second welfare theorems. You'll recall that I said the first and second welfare theorems show that under a certain set of assumptions, you can attain you know a real any outcome that you could possibly want really well with markets without any problems. But it turns out those assumptions don't hold all the time, and in fact, you could argue they rarely hold. That's a source of debate, but we're going to understand how they break down and how economists think about uh, modeling the allocation of goods with markets when those assumptions don't hold. The last section of the course, very brief, is going to be about reconciliation of, you know, when do we use markets, when should we intervene, and thinking about how we're going to do, how we're going to decide on a case-by-case -case basis. And we'll basically, the, the kind of takeaway message is unfortunately going to be life is complicated. Nobody promised us a simple, easy answer, and we're going to show that there is no simple answer where across the board there's a universal prescription for how you can uh, achieve some kind of outcome. There's always trade-offs, um, even in different ways of you know different, the extent of how much you use the market to control things. And we'll talk a little, but by the end of the course, we're going to have the tools to think about when do markets work well, when do they not work so well, and we're also going to have achieved like a good mathematical grounding of all these different economic tools and models which we can then use in the future to study uh, lots and lots and lots of topics. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, good luck. <laughs>